Asian Network. Punjabi Hit Squad on the BBC Asian Network now. Taking it back, just remember this. It's 2009 and one man has just changed the whole landscape of Asian music. The song that comes out is Amplifier. Every single sound system, every single car you can imagine, every single radio station and TV channel are pumping this one song. And it came courtesy of one man early. Here's Imran Khan. He's with us right now. How you doing, my brother? I'm good. We you? saying, Imran, man. You good? Good, man. How are you guys? All good, man. Fresh off a flight, yeah? Yeah. That's how we roll. So taking this back now, uh, 2009, your album Unforgettable dropped and the lead single from that was Amplifier. How did it feel when you produced and made such an amazing track? It feels good, you know. And you know, it already before you uh, release the song, yeah. it's going to be big. Now, you know when you actually heard the song in the studio, how many times did you have to change it to actually make sure that it worked? Uh... With Amplified, it worked like straight away. Yeah. With, with the other uh, songs. Other songs. <laughs> yeah. They took time. Yeah. And what was what was the process? What 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 came first? Was it the beat? Was just the was eight, it was eight it bars loop? It was the eight bar loop, eight and you started writing to yeah, it. Yeah, I started writing the I think uh, the chorus. Yeah. Straight away. Yeah. Gatti started by yeah. That's it. <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> bang bang. Out the uh, the verses came out. And the verses came it out. It was like done in half an hour. No, no way. <laughs> I mean, those are the songs, right? The ones yeah, that get yeah, done yeah. in half an hour yeah. are the ones that usually sometimes, just bang. Sometimes, not always. No. <laughs> I, I mean, sometimes, you even said you put it some of them the in vibe. the bin. It's the vibe, I think. Yeah. When and how was it when you got word back from everyone else that, yo, the song is huge, it's getting played everywhere, people are going crazy, because you put the scene on the on its back around that time when, when that record dropped. It was an experience, basically. Because I never heard a song like that before. Yeah. Nor do we. <laughs> no, so anyone with this type of song. Yeah, and I have loads of songs coming up as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just the experience. That was the experience yeah. for that. I yeah. mean, you know, at the time that came out, was the right you know, timing. It was right. Yeah, uh, the the weather was nice outside. <laughs> you got no. jackpot. <laughs> everything was perfect. We had nice food at that no. time. Everything was going yeah, on. Yeah, but now it's different. You know. I mean, when you were creating the album, did you ever think to yourself, do you know what this is sounding too urban? I should put door breaks on this Never. I need to change up no, no. I need to start singing about something different over here PR this that no you know I mean that is, I'm thinking to myself the amplifier I mean even though you're saying that you know what it, it, it was that it was half an hour done everything there I'm thinking to myself you know what Imran must have been like I can get a thumbie beat in there somewhere along the line, man. <laughs> there we go. But I mean, you know, like we were around, you know, you, the whole crew, when when you were when you were making that album, and it was always one vision, right? It was to be urban Punjabi music, yeah. not even modern urban sound. Punjabi, but just the sound, right? Yeah, just modern you. sound. I was sick and tired of that same, same desi sound, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I was bored of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As and a it, as a Punjabi. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But. You know, you weren't from like Southall. You wasn't from Birmingham. You wasn't from Manchester. You were from somewhere where people least expected something like that to come from. And people you know, from the UK did do regular trips there. Rotterdam, Holland, you know, places like that. Was that the biggest inspiration for you, you know, in terms of like the sound coming out? Because I mean, we've been over to Amsterdam loads of times. We've seen the sound. We've seen how... You know, dance music, house music works Dutch out house. there. Crazy. You know, yeah. was that was that a part of like the, the whole thing for you? No. No? No. Wow. Or something else. It was just like, there was no artist in Holland like me. Yeah. Punjabi. Yeah. But you wanted to be the first one to come through. Exactly. <laughs> and you definitely did that. And I knew always that UK was my market. Yeah. Not Holland. Yeah. UK and that's why I'm here now that's why you're here and one thing as well you never ever performed in Holland around that sort of time years later you performed back in Holland yeah, didn't you Yeah. because I don't know if you, you remember when you guys pumped me up you know then the Holland <laughs> radio station got jealous like no he's from Holland yeah, yeah. and suddenly like, and you said no I'm not man <laughs> no no I said I am <laughs> I remember I don't know if you remember this but we came out to Rotterdam I think it was in December yeah. and do you remember when me and you were at that club yeah. um, it was that round sort of club and uh, yeah. We hanged out there for a little while before you dropped the album. Fifth Lounge, I think. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the one. That's the one. That was that was a good time because I remember chatting yeah. to you about it and you were saying, "Yeah, I'm about to drop an album soon." Mm. And trust me, when this album comes out, it's going to yeah. change the game. I had I had to keep change the album basically. Yeah, because the sound was going too fast. The, yeah, the music uh, fashion. Yeah, that's what I call it. So after Nina, after Nina Chile, what was the next song that you recorded 
that maybe you had to the either scrap song? the next song after Ni Nachile that you recorded? Uh, Gora Gora Rang? No, Gora Gora Rang is the f- actually the first song I ever wrote. No, no way! Yeah. Really? Then, uh, then Ni Nachile. Wow. Yeah. So Gora Gora Rang comes out, Ni yeah. Nachile comes Remember out. Remember when I re- uh, made the album in Pakistan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was uh, one of the songs. Oh, that was one of the songs from there. Yeah. Uh, you I took see. only three or two songs out of that album yeah. and, ca- and flushed yeah. the whole <laughs> album <laughs> away <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> and <all> heard it <laughs> <laughs> what did you put in the bin when you were recording that whole album? I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it was too old. long. Was uh, not, it was not the, the image what I wanted to come with. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. more like Ataula Khan and stuff. Yeah, no, 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 no. We didn't want that from him, right? wanted to come like as me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what And I was waiting for the sound. Yeah. To come and uh, then we found uh, a producer yeah. called Aaron. I mean, you know, and you just mentioned Aaron E. Now, Aaron featured quite heavily on the album. Yeah. How did you find him? Where was he hiding from the world? Basically, it was like a, a lesson for me. Like, you don't need to uh, look very far. Yeah. Sometimes the thing what you're looking for are, All right. are very close to you. Yeah. And so that will happen with Aaron basically. Yeah. He just he used to live uh, next to my uh, street. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. Down the road, I pumping beats. I've never met him before in my life. Uh, he's from the same hood. So who introduced you? Another Turkish guy. See, you know what probably happening? He was probably sitting there looking at Imran go past, playing the amplifier beat every single day out the window. <laughs> and he, Hoping Imran's you'd walking the past. And one day Imran's like, yo, you know what, man? I like that beat, man. Who the hell Let me bless it. it. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Let me go uh, uh, we made a loop. Yeah, and then from that loop we uh, eight bars. It was yeah. only eight bars, and I started. And he started doing it. As I, I felt that the thing going on on the yeah. loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. You, even even I mean, I can understand about the loop and feeling the vibe because whenever we play in a club and you want to mix a song into something else, it's the first eight bars you get, mm. and that's it. You loop it up, and then your vocals come in, and then everyone's like, "Yo, let me just sing the rest of it." Actually, it's one of those songs that you can cut off just after you sing in two or three words and everyone can carry the whole song all exactly. the way through. Yeah. That's how you know it's an absolute anthem. And when you listen to Amplifier, it is aged well. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Fine All of the wine. songs on the album. <laughs> all exactly. Now, um, Amplifier came out, you are an absolute star, um, and then another star picked up on you being an artist, Drake. Yeah. Drake started to like be like, yo, you know what, let me retweet Who is this, this video. Guy? Who is this guy? Um, now, I heard that there was talks and maybe a studio session with you and Drake. Or a collaboration. Or a collaboration like, coming. Yeah. If or, it's written, you know, it's going to happen. I mean, if, yeah. it's, if it's written on your hand. Yeah, it's, if it's written, yeah. it's I mean, going to happen. The, the idea is that must have been floating around in your head when yeah, Drake definitely, had Yeah, that. definitely. Why not? But I'm not uh, waiting for that. You're not waiting for Drake, no. man. No one, no one wants to I'm wait not, for I'm Drake. Not, I'm doing my own stuff as well, you know. Exactly. Drake, you don't want to be like a date with Drake, mate. You know, you don't want to be late with, with that. You know, <laughs> you just want to carry on with that. I mean, the, the Drake thing would have been big, but something that was even bigger was the track Bewafa. Now, there's not been really that many songs that are Punjabi in the last, like, say, 10, 15 years that discuss what you did on Bewafa. Who was it about? What was her name? The girl? was just an imaginary girl. In oh, the- see, that's it. See, see that's where the imaginary, that's where imaginary girl imaginary comes came in from. from. <laughs> <laughs> that's where that came so, from. Around that time, you uh, had a some, somewhere else came. Uh, uh, from. Ah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> then the snake came. Yeah, and you had a snake in the video. That was beautiful. And that was that was that, a big moment yeah, for everyone. Yeah, yeah, and, and why was why? Firstly, why did you decide to make a song because about I, heartbreak? Because uh, you heard the amplifier song, and after yeah. three months, I released that uh, beautiful song. Yeah. I want to give a different side of me as well. Yeah, not only the urban side, but yeah. also the. The lovey-dovey side. Punjabi side. <laughs> yeah. You can say the Punjabi side because you don't hear any English word in that song. Yeah, you yeah. don't. In Bayofa. You don't, you don't. I mean, the beat and was banging. And Amplify, you heard yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, like uh, English letters. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Lyrics, man. That's what I'm talking you, about. You gave us some serious bars there. Now, you um, changed it for everyone. Who decided to make the video for Bayofa and who decided to incorporate the snake? In um, Same ideas came from me. Yeah. I wanted to do it different yeah yeah were there any other animals that you were thinking of putting in there before the yeah, snake got involved to, uh in you know well, there was a snake <laughs> that was was the uh, other than the snake <laughs> was there any other animals there's only one running around somewhere anyway a couple of rats in there you know what i'm saying a yeah. black colored rat in line of black colored rat in there i mean you know you've always had this thing about making videos differently you know i mean you look at what's going on around 
in the music scene and the culture itself and you decide that you know what I want to make something different so you know you've worked with um, David in uh, Dubai you know and he's created some amazing yeah. visual m masterpieces for you you know like yeah, Imaginary Girl Imaginary yeah, is a flawless video yeah. how much did that video cost? Uh, roughly roughly like let's say 30,000 uh, yeah Imran's got that, man. He's got that in his bag right yeah. now, man. He's euros are sterling. <laughs> euros are sterling or dollars? Euros, euros. 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 See, you run with euros, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, of course, you know, you've had many videos since uh, Beowulf. But, of course, you know, the thing that stood out about the Beowulf thing was, you know, you in the penthouse just chilling and, you know, the snake around you and all the rest of it. And, you know, you, you said that the, the ideas came for you. Now, the idea for the song came from you as well. And, you know, who, who produced the beat? Was it Aaron who did no, that as well? Oh, how can Hakan you? Okay. And who is he? Another person that was living was in the street next to you as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he, listen, man. He this had, is he had the shop. Yeah, the amplifier shop. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is too much, man. Yeah. This is like you got. Uh, was like written. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You met. You so met you had the amplifier shop. This is just. Yeah, that was of uh, Hakan Ozan owned the uh, amplifier shop. A car, a car uh, <laughs> and, and that's how it yeah, came about. Car system. Uh, so he must have loved amplifier as well, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> but he said, uh, "Give it to me. <laughs> I'd use it for an advert for my shop." I give that song to Aaron. <laughs> Back on the BBC Asia Network with Imran Khan. So we're celebrating 10 years of the album. You know what? Massive, unforgettable, man. How can you forget it? You it can't, you can't. Like, every single song on there had its own lane. I mean, not going to even lie. There were people out there that started sounding like you. It got a little bit confusing about if, you know, it was it was, it was, it was it Imran Khan that we're listening to. There are Asians, in it? You need to copy, like, man. We just Whenever straight... you open a shop and everyone wants to open Everyone opens the same <laughs> shop. And that's what happened because I remember around that time you dropped the album. Everyone was just trying to let the album sink in. Six months later, we heard so many people sounding like you. You inspired so many people. And how did it feel for you? Like At first, in the beginning, uh, uh, it was very annoying. Yeah. And then I was thinking about it. No, that means I'm doing something good. Yeah. That they are that they're, still copying. That they're, st and they're, they're, they're still copying. They just get inspired. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's good to be the leader, right? You don't want to be a follower. You always want to be a leader. That's what's exactly. all right. Um, now, uh, one of our favorite tracks of the album was Pata Chalga. Now, um, it never got a video release, but you kind of put one together of you performing a track all across the world. It was actually a fan of me. Oh, sorry, a fan video, it? Yeah, a, oh, uh, a fan, and she's an actress as well, I guess. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but I can't mm. remember... Uh, Her name. It's all uh, good, man. You can check it on YouTube <laughs> yeah, when yeah, you see yeah. on uh, Pata yeah. And, yeah, yeah, And the beginning part... Uh, she Pata made it. She made it. She made it. She was basically uh, following me from uh, in the, in Canada on yeah. my shows. Okay. And everywhere, uh, wherever I used to go. Yeah. And uh, she just uh, recorded all those footage and she, uh, she sent the video to me. Yeah. I said, can you please upload it? I made a video <laughs> yeah, for you. That's when you <laughs> know, not? that's when you know you got fans. Yeah. When your fans are putting in work like that, you know it's on. Now just going to Pata Jolgia, like the beginning part of the song, mm. where did that all come from? Uh, Aaron was playing uh, a um, synth. Mm -hmm. Sounds like the 1940s yeah, America. A, a plugin. I, don't, yeah. I can't remember, he knows uh, all those plugins, yeah. but uh, he played, a, I was just testing a plugin mm. and we, uh, I heard the sound. Yeah. I said, hey, keep that sound. <laughs> keep that, keep that, keep that. Yeah. And then uh, we just played something on it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you came. And then I just played. And we just used that in the beginning That's of the song. Was, yeah. But you know when the beat drops, it bangs. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you come out to that song, right? When you do a live show, yeah. right? It's one of yeah, the first yeah. tracks you play. Yeah. And I, then, I do yeah. that in my sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%, and, man. And even that beat, any hip-hop rapper, if that was given to any hip-hop rapper back then, they would go crazy over that beat. Yeah. Because that was a monster yeah, beat. That was like, in, in that time, it was in that south yeah. uh, sound, you know? Yeah, sound, south, yeah. I don't know what you call it, like sound. South side, man. South, south side, side. yeah. Like, but day, you, day bought, south. you bought like your whole Desi vibe and the hip hop blend together yeah. perfectly. Yeah. It was just like a hip hop bungra yeah. track. I'm waiting for someone else to do it. So oh, they, they can copy you again. See, no, that's not, not talking copy, about. I will maybe collaborate with them. Oh, really? Okay. It sounds good. Right, well, you heard it here right first. Yeah. You got a beat like that, man. You got some beats that bang. You need to hook right. up with. But, uh, but I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, Ten years. the producer um, ain't been born yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's still trying to find his feet. He's, he lives in, uh, down the road now from Mimra's new yeah. house. Near a new, 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 new shop. I've known like a new producer as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we'll talk about it in a second, but I want to go back to some of the collaborations and, of course, some of the co signs that you've had. Now, you know, we just spoke about Drake 
and that kind of put you on a bit of a radar of a lot of different people, including Tim Westwood. Yeah. Tim Westwood was like, when we first played Amplifier, he was like, yo, dog, what track is this, man? I, I like, remember when we played it, we were playing at London Mella for BBC Asian Network in the mixed tent and we played Amplifier and Tim West was standing behind us. Because, you know, we do this usual thing, like we just said, right? We play like three, four words from you and and boom, you turn the volume down and everyone sings the rest of it. Tim is a like, yo, what song is this, baby dog? I need this right here. <laughs> and the, you know what it is? If anyone thinks that I'm lying, there are pictures online of Tim Westwood speaking to me at like London Mellor 2012. And he's going over to try and look at my playlist. That wasn't the only person that co-signed. Mr. Jam from Radio 1 and 1 Extra was actually the first DJ to put me up on Imran Khan. Ni Nachale. Now, we were, we were performing in Nottingham. It was a student event, um, a university event. Um, we were playing there. And everyone kept coming up to us. Can you play Ni Nachale? Can you play Ni Nachale? It's by Imran Khan. And earlier on in the day, the, f- the first thing that Mr. Jam said to me was, yo, you know what? There's this one track by Imran Khan. You've got to play it. I was like, who? The politician. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Trust me, it's a man called Imran Khan. Just download the song and play it because they that's the only song they want, yeah? I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Get to the club. First thing, 50 requests for the one song. I'm like, do you know what? I bet you this is like one of their friends that they want to request something. Anyway, I play the song. As, you know, usually I just give it a bit. Everyone went mad. I was like, you know what? I'm missing something here. There was a thousand people singing the lyrics. So and I, I, it, I, that was just back. out fresh. Remember, D, we pulled it back and I was like, all right, let me do this. These like confused as well. You've never Pen and seen... Paper, Imran Khan, got to remember this artist, man. You've never seen two DJs so confused in their whole lives. And I play it again and I was like, yo, who is this guy? And then like literally like a couple of months later, we meet you and we're like, you know what, man? You're like, you're literally it, man. You're a star in the making, man. So yeah, I've got to shout out all the people that were um, definitely on Imran Khan early. Now, um, bringing this up to date now, you got a brand new album coming out 10, 10 years later. What's the collaborations going on with that? There must be some good things there going on. Yeah, mainstream producers okay, mm-hmm. and uh, artists. Are we talking like mainstream as in the sounding mainstream US. or they are actually mainstream Mainstream, out A-list artists. A-list A-list. Artist. A-list. And, A-list. And what kind of a sound are you got? Are you going to flip up? D- Listen, do I have to go back and produce my album again? Is that what it's going to be? Do I need to go back in the studio and sent, change? Yeah, you sent a lot of people back to the studio. Yeah, yeah definitely. Everyone was like, album, cancel. <laughs> yeah, they're going to uh, learn from it, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, because it was difficult for me as well, but... Uh, I came out of it. All right, cool. Yeah. So you went into this culture of just dropping singles um, and I, I, people want an album from you. That's what they want. Because we had think, Imaginary, we had I, Satisfier. I think, I think it's very important to release an album now. Mm-hmm. I was just waiting for the right time and I think it is the time right now. I can feel it coming. You feel, you, there's a lot of artists out there. There's, there's single artists, but then there's album artists that people want a body of work. Yeah. And you are an album artist. Yeah. And that's what people want from you. Yeah. And that's what you're going to give us, right? 100%. And how many tracks will feature on this album? Yeah, maybe 15, maybe 20, maybe 25, maybe 30, maybe 35. So it could be... Maybe 40. Oh, so you don't know? I really don't know. I just want to make good music and uh, combine the album together and give it a nice character. All right, so what else is coming up for you? So, like, um, what more other music are you making? I have my app coming. Your app? Yeah. App. And what app is it? Yeah, IK Season. It's called IK Season. And uh, it's more like uh, I'm going to be more interact with the real fans. The real fans? The real fans. I got the surprise for my real friends. And what about clothing as well? Yeah, you yeah, get into clothing? Yeah, merchandise. I uh, always had the issues with merch. Mm-hmm. A lot of other people were, were doing my merch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah still we got Imran Khan merch before you, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, now I'm coming with the uh, own uh, clothing line as well. And merch together. But it's everything in 2020. 2020? Yeah, it's, it's going to be very productive for me. Yeah. A, a lot of hard work, sleepless nights. Yeah. And touring. Yeah. Listen, man, we need to get a proper tour out of Imran Khan. 100%. That's what we need. You know what, Imran Khan... Listen, Imran Khan is the one person I know that still can smash the stage, right? They're very... You know, artists fall off all the time. You know, I see people, they come on stage, no vibe, no nothing. D and I perform many times with Imran Khan, and every single time, it goes off. Doesn't matter where it is. London, Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow, anywhere it goes, man, it happens. Exactly that, man. Yeah. Well, Alhamdulillah, they say. Yeah, yeah man. 
Well, thank you very, very much, man, for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. Imran no Khan, man. right here on the BBC Asian Network, celebrating 10 years of the album Unforgettable. Asian Network.